All right, garbage. So what do we throw away? The greatest component of waste in the United States, probably the same in many industrialized oh, countries, right is yes. paper. Lol. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Swap them. That, that's yeah, it's paper. About 27% uh, food waste. 15%. This, of course, is one of the original... Uh, forms of, uh, of garbage, of waste, of solid waste. My guess is that it has increased uh, more so uh, in recent times just simply because people are more wasteful with their food. They're, they were, are not willing to eat as much. Um, they, it's, it, we, of course, garbage, solid waste increases uh, exponentially with standard of living. We're more willing to throw stuff away, to buy stuff that's in excess packaging, all those other kind of things, that uh, pay for convenience. Uh, when you have a higher standard of living, more disposable income, etc., and uh, food waste is certainly along those lines. Then there's my old buddy yard waste. So here I go again on my soapbox about how people spend too much time taking care of their yards. Um, what else did I talk about? How this was an issue when it came to yards and water. maintenance. There was yeah, with water, right? Uh, water resources number one use of water <coughs> in the Central Florida area is for water people watering their yards. Um, and consequently, here's another area in which uh, simply making sure you've got a nicely trimmed, maintained yard, etc., cetera, um, causes environmental impact. Um, now, you, you could make the argument that, well, if you didn't, you know, pick it up and package it, etc., it would still decompose and do the same thing it ends up doing at the landfill. And that's actually true, although they do chop it up and stuff to accelerate its decomposition at the landfill and produce mulch and things like that. Um, However, what's the difference in it happening at your house versus happening at the landfill? What will be the main difference environmental impact-wise between those two options? Inside well, yeah, I mean, that's part of it. That's the way they do some parts. Some of it they do inside a processing facility, but much of it is outside there at the landfill. It's just going to waste and go to garbage and everything. Yeah, Roger? Transportation, absolutely. And this is a big part of a lot of waste management and everything when it comes to uh, what our impact and everything, the environmental impact of these different processes is the fact that you are transporting it, moving along, and that of course is going to require um, uh, use of fossil fuels typically and the impact of roads and all the other kind of things that comes along with driving this stuff around. <clears throat> and therefore, consequently, um, have doing your own mulching and, and composting and things like that uh, will reduce the uh, environmental impact in those particular areas. Plus, you don't have to buy fertilizer and other things like that. So, as a matter of fact, part of your food waste also, as you may know, can go into that compost uh, pile that you use at your house and therefore have a ready supply of fertilizer and not have to worry so much about um, uh, hauling it away, taking it out to the curb and everything. That's my environmental uh, consciousness there is, is in the form of laziness. And that I don't want to bag up a bunch of grass and leaves and stuff like that and haul it out to, to the curb. It doesn't make sense to me when I can just let it decompose in my yard. Um, the uh, next after that is probably um, the biggest challenge when it comes to solid waste management, and that is plastic. Wow. Man. And there's a number of different reasons why wow. plastic, you guys get off your phones, please pay attention. Uh, there's a number of different reasons why plastic is, is a big issue. One, of course, is the fact that plastics are not uh, very bio biodegradable. Um, they are going to stick around for a long period of time. Uh, another one is the fact that plastics are oftentimes toxic substances. Um, they're toxic when they decompose. They, they themselves, when they're undecomposed, are also toxic when things ingest these. Um, it's not super toxic in that you'll get you know, poisoned by contact with it. Obviously, we make our water bottles and stuff out of it. But ingestion uh, by uh, or other organisms can lead to, to problems, choking, and other kinds of things. And yes, long-term exposure to these different substances uh, has been linked to, to cancer and, and uh, uh, hormonal uh, effects uh, from them. And you probably heard that with using like plastic bottle PCBs and things like that. Same thing happens out in the environment, of course. Um, and then also the fact that plastics, not only because they're uh, non-biodegradable, they stick around for a long period of time, they're light. Uh, they're low in, dens in density, and therefore, not only are they easily carried by the wind, and many of these are going to end up in uh, in the ocean, 
um, once they're in the ocean, then they float, and that's that makes it even you know. Or if they end up in uh, like in a river or something like that, they they blow there or whatever else. That river eventually goes out into the ocean. It floats. It's going to be transported along the way. Uh, if you throw a can, which is not good to do, obviously, but if you throw an aluminum can in the water, uh, once it fills up with water, it's going to sink to the bottom and eventually will, will rot and decompose in there, and, and aluminum itself is not terribly bad for the environment. It's a natural component of the crust of the earth. Plastics will float out into the ocean, and even though they're, they're low in biodegradability, uh, they do break down. The sunlight, the UV radiation does break them down and they become smaller and smaller bits of them. And what they're finding now is in the ocean that they're becoming uh, incorporated into the food chain. So these bits of plastic, these, these literally trillions of tons of plastic that are in the ocean right now um, are not only floating out there as big debris and stuff, they're breaking down into microscopic pieces that organisms are eating and consuming and it's getting into the food chain and getting into the biological systems and in some cases like with tuna and stuff like that it's getting into us so this is a this is another one of the big problems that that we see with plastics and the many different things that they uh, impacts that they have um, so we're slowly killing ourselves well we're Over you know time. killing the environment I mean it's a big part of that and yes it comes back everything that goes out in the environment that's a that's a central issue of course in environmental science it's not just about hugging the trees and protecting the the buddies and the and the other kinds of nice you know flipper and all those other kinds of things out there these are things that affect us of course and they're things that we're exposed to and as I mentioned before I think that a lot of the uh, uh, um, medical symptoms that are more common nowadays with MS and, and, and uh, uh, autism, lupus, things like that. I think a lot of that can be linked to our exposure to these types of substances on a, on a regular basis. Increased cancer rates as well. So um, there's your breakdown. Now you may, if you do the math and add up the percentages, you'll see that it doesn't, there, there, there's about 20% left over of miscellaneous things like glass and rubber and uh, textiles, fabrics things like that that make up the rest of the garbage. So there's, of course, a wide variety of different things. But these are your main components of what people throw away, okay? Um, so what to do with it? So uh, taking your, like I said, the garbage, getting rid of your garbage, moving it away from where you are, putting it in a particular place has, has been around ever since people have been producing garbage, which means, you know, since we've, we've been living organisms. Um, the, uh, in the past, of course, you find a place to put all that together, like I mentioned, the, the piles of shells that, to, that are left over from, from Native American populations. Um, nowadays, we have to go a little bit further than that, not only because of the amount of, of waste that, that we have to get rid of, but because of the uh, type of substances that we put in the garbage now are much more toxic, whether it is the plastics or also we've got a lot of metals, so like with electronics and and mercury and lead and cadmium and other kinds of heavy metals, all of these toxic substances are much more likely to be in your average garbage bag now than they were even 50 years ago. Um, so we have, the, uh, we have a, the limited capacity, there's only so much space for them, but that, I want to I wanna stress this, that this is not a, a huge issue. We have pretty, you know, we, we still have a fair amount of space uh, to dispose of things, landfill space left. So that's not the biggest environmental issue, but in some cases it's definitely a problem. You also have the NIMBY problem, right? Which is what? Right. People don't want to have a landfill. It doesn't matter that you have plenty of space to put in a landfill. It's not acceptable for a lot of people to, to have landfills nearby. They smell bad. They attract, you know, vermin and, and lots of birds and, and stuff like that. Um, so it's, it's not a popular thing to have in your neighborhood. Um, the, uh, the big thing now, though, like I said, with all the toxic substances we put into the landfills, um, I'm going to go ahead and let you have a point. Group A, you went before group two, right? Yeah, you were third to go. Because that is a potential issue there, but more of a problem that we have with landfills is groundwater contamination. So I'll go ahead, like I said, I'll leave your point there. I want to draw it, write it in here so everybody can see it. So we'll put it there also. Groundwater. Because of the toxic things that are in our garbage, the uh, rain can soak through it. Uh, um, something called leachate is just basically water that soaks through garbage. Yum. Um, and that leachate may contain a number of different hazardous substances that can get into the groundwater. And then, of course, 
that could become somebody's drinking water supply or is somebody's drinking water supply and then problems there from there. So probably, um, so that's landfills. So, so probably about as long as people have been throwing their garbage in a certain place, uh, they figured out that by burning their garbage, they could reduce the amount of garbage quite a bit. And, you know, if it's like food waste and stuff, they can burn off the, the stuff that things want to eat and everything. Um, so incineration or burning your garbage has been around for a long period of time. Um, it does reduce the amount of space that's necessary. You burn up a lot of those that organic stuff, get rid of it. You can produce electricity from burning garbage. It's a common thing, uh, much more common uh, to make these waste to energy type plants, which will burn the garbage and and uh, therefore um, enough. You know that's going to generate enough heat to boil water and run a steam turbine. Um, the uh, the big issue with those is not only they're very expensive. But, of course, with garbage, you have to be very careful what you burn. The potential for air pollution is high. Even if you clean it up quite a bit, there's still a high, uh, big source of air pollution. They're still going to be putting carbon dioxide in the air, so that's a global climate change issue. Um, and consequently, on these facilities, uh, the garbage is, is highly separated, um, and the smoke from burning that garbage is highly filtered and, and processed to reduce the air pollution process as much as possible. So they are very expensive but they are becoming more and more common. Um, the best thing, of course, to do with your waste is recycling. Recycling is part of this whole process, even though it's not, you know, I'm giving you the impression that oh, this is all the stuff that's going to the landfill or getting burned. Recycling is part of that, part of what is taken away from our solid waste. Uh, this, of course, is ideal. Uh, there are many benefits to recycling. Um, the biggest part probably is actually, though, the reduced amount of raw materials you have to obtain. We've talked a lot about uh, mining, the impacts of mining and thing, things like that. Uh, also, um, the fact that uh, there's energy and pollution that's produced in uh, refining them, taking them from the raw materials and putting them into their final product. Uh, and then you have landfill space. Like I said, landfill space is not a huge issue. Some areas it is. Some, you know, if you have an island nation, for example, you're going to have a lot of times they have to pay to, to get their, their garbage shipped away from them. Uh, the... Um, uh, recycling does have some drawbacks. You have transportation costs, of course. And then you have the, the separation, labor intensive or, or automation used to separate your different recyclables into different things. A lot of substances don't recycle well. A lot of times it's easy to get contamination in there that can, can ruin them. Like I've heard that if you you leave a receipt inside one of the, the in the uh, grocery bags that it can blow a whole batch that they you know it's no longer usable. I don't know, but what? Um, it means you to take your receipt. You know how you take your plastic bags back to the grocery store to have them recycled. Maybe you've heard of that concept. No. Okay. Well, you well make a big issue of making sure you take the receipt out of there. The paper, I guess, messes up the process. Um, but uh, recycling is obviously good, better than throwing it away, but it is not the best thing to do to reduce your solid waste problem. The, the best thing to do is to reduce the amount of disposable things that you uh, consume in the first place. And therefore, the less you consume, the less is produced. Now, this is a concept, by the way, that I want people to understand because a lot of people have this impression that it doesn't matter for certain things how much you use them because they've already been made. Um, I've heard students say this before, why should I say paper, it's already been made, somebody's gotta use it, right? Well, believe it or not, the less you use, eventually, in some way along the supply line, the less you will buy, the less you will buy, the less will be produced by the manufacturer, et cetera, et cetera. So I just wanna make sure everybody is clear on the fact that if you reduce your consumption of certain things, eventually that will mean that less of them are produced and, and you know, the raw materials and all the other impacts that come from that will take place. Uh, reusing then, of course, is also ideal uh, to reduce buying new materials of that. And then as kind of like a last resort, recycle. Not to mean that recycling is bad, but it is better to reduce your use of disposal items in the first place. Reuse those disposable items whenever you can. And then at the end of the line, if you still have these disposable items, then recycle them rather than throwing them into the garbage. Questions? Anybody? About this? No? Okay.